second is saturation flow s so saturation flow is the maximum flow of vehicles passing the stop line during green period talking about flow it is number of vehicle per unit time it is not just the number it reflects to the time so time here we refer to the green time for each phase so i will show you right let's say in one phase one phase it will start with green green at the end of the green indication the traffic signal will flash amber and followed with all red period and red so from the beginning of the green indication that is the time zero so now let us look into what is happening during the beginning of green indication till the end of amber period so by assumption all vehicles stop when the traffic signal flash all red period so now let us look into this line the line show the variations of vehicles flow rate passing the stop line during a green period so now it is green period but here start from green till the end of amber by assumption that all vehicle will travel from beginning of the green till the end of amber period before they completely stop so the line shows the flow rate in vehicles per second this is the flow rate and if you still remember the top line here the peak, the summit, is saturation flow. If you still remember the QUK relationship, the number of traffic per hour, which is we call as flow, will not exceed the maximum value. So it was stable during the green indication and it will start to drop. So when the traffic signal flash the green indication, the vehicle will start to move slow, slow and fast, fast, fast and steadily move during the green period until the traffic signal flash the amber, the amber indication. So the traffic start to slow down and stop. But there are two lines here. First line, second line. What does it mean by all these two? It indicates the L. L second. L second is lost time. Lost time due to late start. We assume that the first vehicle behind the stop line start late. And the second lost time is lost time due to early stop which the vehicles start to stop before the amber period is ended and from the period of the end of lost time here normally two seconds after the traffic signal flash the green indication till here before the first vehicle start to stop we call it as effective green period, which vehicle can move smoothly during this period. So basically, the effective green period is the total of green indication plus amber minus two lost time due to late start and early stop. So that is effective green period. So I will show you later on what is the effective green period. What is the sign? There are several types of green. Relax, I will show you later on. So now we want to focus on saturation flow, the S. So in order for you to determine the saturation flow of the traffic signal, you have to know the QN. 
QN is the observed or expected traffic flow in the given movement and the unit is passenger car unit per hour. Bear in mind, for traffic signal design, the unit for the vehicles is always passenger car unit per hour. If you are given in unit vehicle per hour, then you have to convert into passenger car unit per hour. Then, saturation flow for the given movement also in passenger car unit per hour and the symbol is S and N indicates the number of phases. And you have to know the W. It is width of the lane for the movement, meter. So basically, the lane width here refer to the total lane width for one direction. So let's say uh, there are two number of lanes, each three meters. So all together in one approach, because two number of lane per direction. So three times by two, so we get six. So now, why the lane width is important in our design? Because the S is determined via the lane width. If the lane width is greater or equal than 5.5 meter per direction, then the S is equal to 5 to 5 multiplied by the width. Let's say, same as the previous example that I mentioned earlier, the lane width is 3 meter, but there are two number of lane per direction. So 3 meter multiplied by 2, we get 6. So 6 is greater than 5.5 meter. Then the S equal to 5 to 5 multiplied by 6. And the unit is passenger car unit per hour. But if the lane width is smaller than 5.5 meter, then you can use this table to determine the S. Bear in mind the lane width is in meter and the S in passenger car unit per hour. So basically, 3 meter, 3.5 meter is for normally one lane per direction. 4 till 5 is maybe in rural area with two number of lane, which if let's say 4, probably there are two number of lane per direction, but the lane width is 2 meter per lane. And for 5, let's say 2 number of lane per direction, then each lane is 2.5 meter. So, check what is the lane width because the lane width will determine the S, either to use this formula or this table. Right. Talking about S, the saturation flow, actually, you have to correct the saturation flow by several factor, which the first is percentage of right turning traffic, FR. Second, percentage of left turning traffic, FL. Turning radius, FT. And also gradient, FG. So how to get all of these four values? from table which table we have to refer to GKR specification but in this lesson we will not do this correction so there are two example which you have to correct the S value first if the S saturation flow for mixed movement lane so this is the formula S prime equal to S multiplied by FR, R indicates the right turning traffic, multiplied by FL, L is left turning traffic in percentage, multiplied by the gradient, and the unit always passenger car unit per hour. But if you want to calculate or correct the saturation flow for exclusive turning lane, then you have to use this formula which s prime equal to the s that you determine through either using the formula or table multiplied by ft turning radius and multiplied by fg 
and as I mentioned earlier, all of these parameters you can obtain from the table in JKR specification.